It's just luck. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna have to deal with me doing this again. Oh no. <laughs> Do you want to use my phone? Because I'll have the actual. Oh, but it has a delay. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Oh. <laughs> this is gonna be like the running joke. Slow. You have to go really slow. That way you know which direction goes where. Don't just pull. Now pull to where you want it to go. Well, I wish it could be right in front of me, but how can I do that? Because I'm there. <laughs> I want it to go like... I don't understand. <laughs> this is like... <laughs> the beginning of every stream is going to be like this until I figure out a permanent solution. <laughs> I don't know why I changed it. This isn't right, is it? It's leaning. Look, it's not even up. Oh, oh, it's it's falling. <laughs> oh. Move your... Oh, there. Okay. That looks about right. <sighs> Who's that? Hello! <laughs> like is like... Fools. Okay, what did we name our donkey? Eddie. Eddie. Okay, we got Eddie here. <laughs> I gotta see where my limits are. Here. <laughs> we should get some tape. tape I know, but it's board. different each time. Each stream we start off. <laughs> got tape off on this section. All right. We're on part three. And so we're, <laughs> we left off over here with the roof on this entrance way. So we're just going to jump right back into it. So, hey, howdy, hey to everybody who joins. And we're so glad that you joined us. This is part three of. <laughs> blank. Uh, hopefully the last one. Okay. I have these little pieces that I'm going to show you belong to the roof. Not the poops. Okay. Um, no poops. There's lots of poops in here. Wood poops. We call them wood poops. I have a sneaky feeling there's going to be one more video. I don't know why, but I feel like there's a lot left to do. Hall ticket booth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I gotta get it done because this belongs to somebody. All right, so we're gonna bring this forward. God. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Listen, I gotta fix this. This is bad. Let me just do this, okay? Let me take a moment and do this. There. I feel like this is better. What do you think? Yeah. All right. I think the reason why I couldn't get the angle is because I wasn't messing with the top. Okay, we're, you're not in the shot. What are you doing? I was doing that because we're moving. <sighs> All right, let's work on the awning parts. You'll find these three pieces. I wish there was a video here. I guess you really. I can get you one. Do you want a camera? No, time for that. Okay, they're gonna go like this, and the two shorter sides go like that, and then there's that gap, but that gets covered with the paper. Uh, the way they get held on are these little braces, these little brackets. These little braces. I call them braces. That's right. So there's going to be four in the front and two on each side. And so where there's the breaks here um, of wood, that's where those will glue right on. So I'm going to put a little daub, daub, little dab of glue a little bit of glue well, right here on my wet palette, which is not very wet anymore, but that's all right. Um, if we want to wet, wet it up, just pull back the layer and I love this little squirt bottle. And it just saturates it perfectly. So I'm telling you, get yourself a wet palette if you plan on doing a lot of these kits because it'll be fun. Okay, it'll save you a lot of time. Now what we can do is there's a short side and a long side. You just have to be consistent. Um, either the long or the short glued on. It, it's up to you. I'm gonna do the long. So there's a long side and a short side. Again, just be consistent that they're the same and you'll see that I'm just adding them on. They're going to be kind of hidden, so I wouldn't worry too much about excess glue. The 
glue dried on this brush. Now it's kind of stiff. It's going to be on its way into the trash after this video. <laughs> okay, so we're doing the long side. So I'm going to do long side on all of these. I can just put a little bit of excess glue off. So one, two, three, four in the front. Very easy, peasy. Lemon squeezy. There you go. So one, two, three, four. Just make sure that they're somewhat even. Steven. Who's Steven? I know a Steven. Is he even? He's a little odd. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Okay. And then the way that goes on is then it'll just go bloop. Okay. So let's put mm. two brace, two brackets on the other side. Braces, brackets, and then there's two wood pieces. So we just put the two there, just like that. Can you see that? Yes. Is I it showing? So. There's a delay. Is there? There's always a delay on that my phone. That's why big I of a look. delay. Yeah, that's like a 10 is second, it, there's like a 15 second Is it there now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what happened to this one? <laughs> and then on the other side. So when it says it's live, it's not necessarily live. I don't think you know what live means. <laughs> Live means right now. There, you'll never get a no delay live. <gasps> Why not? That's not possible. Oh, that's the future I want. All right, there we go. So now the front should be all dry by now. I want a future where we can 3D print meatballs. Yo. Um, I bet that's now. We're close. No, they can print human skin. You can do a meatball. A good meatball. <laughs> I don't want it to taste like no printer. <laughs> All right, then we're going to glue the tops of those braces and add our long piece on top and just hold it there steady for just a second because this glue is awesome. This is tight bond, quick and thick. There is no other glue I recommend. It's tight bond, quick and thick, because sometimes you like it quick, and sometimes you like it thick. And hi to anybody who jumps on at any time during this. Feel free to come and chat with us about anything. It doesn't have to be this. Um, we just like chatting with our friends. So now we're putting on the side awnings. They're the only um, rec small rectangle pieces in the set, so you know that they're the awnings. I just didn't put... Frosting says, uh -huh. people were 3D printing vegan steaks a while back. They seemed gross, but they did it. <laughs> but they did it. Superfluous says it works so good. The braces? I think so. Or the meatball? I'm, I'm assuming the braces. <laughs> okay. And that's pretty much done. Um, you're going to supply the paper for yourself. It's not in the kit, but we'll do that once that's all the dry. Glue. What? The glue is what they were referring to. <laughs> not the steaks. <laughs> it's cute with the little steps to that. Um, it kind of looks like my new building that will be coming out. Oh, teaser. This summer. Um, the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. So that'll be kind of fun. Um, I based it on the Hong Kong design, and then looks like that's the design that they're it's bringing no to Disneyland. Family tree house. Right now, it's what just treehouse. It's, it's the Adventureland treehouse, and yeah. it's got sea stuff going on. Yeah, there. it's nice. It's nice. So, but that that whole facade is how I um, designed mine, and then it came out, and I was like, oh, because we have gone to Hong Kong so often, and that was my favorite um, thing to see there.
Okay, we're now going to move to the little ticket office. I think that's a good time to do that. It's a very quick build. Um, let me get all the pieces for it. Frosting asked the whole tree house. If you're gonna make the whole tree house. Yeah, are you excited for that? Is that one of your favorites? <laughs> this is how it comes. My thing fell out. This is how that comes. I need to make Does, sure that I have all the pieces for that. Does Disney World have a tree house? Does Disney World have a tree house? I'm sure Frosting will know. No. I don't think so. Do they? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Are these know. all the pieces that I have? One. See, there's a ticket office Frosting roof. There is. A ticket office floor. And the sides of the building. The front of the building goes with that, and these are the pieces that go with it. This fringe doesn't come with the set, but I will link where you can get that. Very inexpensive. I got it off of an Etsy seller. Ah, uh, the top of my head, I can't remember the name. Um, let's go ahead and say ticket off this floor face down. I always like to put the lettering on the bottom. What am I doing? these the facades so i'm gonna do the walls it's gonna go like this that um the walls and the front facade and i kind of want a yellow so i'm gonna go back to that y15 um for the copic marker and just do a quick go little thing nothing i like it to be a little worn so it doesn't have to be the whole thing how great are markers on these sets huh that they could be so quick and the drying time is zero <laughs> and you could just move on with your yeah. life <laughs> so great i will say though those craft paints they do great too at drying but you know, you don't have a mess. It's just all contained in this one little stick of your finger. Um, Frosting says there is a tree house and that it's in front of the citrus swirls stall. Oh, yes. The citrus swirls. And they have a story. Would you like to hear their story? Yes, let's hear the story. They said, on my most recent trip to Magic Kingdom, there was a cast member trying to get people to rope drop the tree house. They said everything was having technical difficulties that morning, so I ended up rope dropping it. Oh, what an exciting ex attraction. Mm, that's funny. So what I'm going to do for here, because I was meant to put this as engrave and not score. So I'm going to do a little darker brown and a lighter brown. Let's do this one. Okay. And I'm going to use my brush tip and just color in the lettering that says cash or barter. Like that. And then I think I'll take a lighter brown. Is there an even lighter one? Then this one looks awfully light. Let's take this one and see what this does. This is an E33, more like a beige. Let's test it out. Yes. I like that. That'll work. Okay. And then I think I will do the outside. This is the outside of the... I'm going to show you all these things in just a second. You see, so this is your kit here. It comes with all these pieces. What's nice is that you can use, uh, it's like a puzzle, I mean, like a puzzle. You could um, use this to paint or marker, and then all these pieces will come out. So. Let's see this one actually. I want a different color. Is it showing? 
And my window, this is the window of the ticket office. You could paint it, you could marker. You could leave it blank. You could. Okay, now all these pieces will come out. <laughs> See? Maybe not that one. <laughs> Work at it. Okay? Um, and this one is, you discard that. This piece will glue on top of that. It kind of just gives it a little bit more of a standing out. I'm going to take my tweezers and just dip this very lightly through the glue and then dip a little excess off and just do that a couple times till it gets tacky on the back, but not messy. And then I can just put that on top. Um, Natalie Whatever. Hoyt would like to know Hi. what color markers are you using? Okay, so uh, for this particular, uh, for the wall, I used a Copic marker Y15. That's cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow. Um, on these lighter browns, I used an E37, which is sepia. And for the reddish brown color, I used E09 Burnt Sienna. See, Burnt Sienna is like the go-to. Uh, that's the same color as the stairs. Sienna, like the city in Italy? What? Or is that Vienna? <laughs> Vienna's in Austria. Oh, I thought that was... Oh, I mixed up my Venice and my Vienna. Made a mistake. I can't believe you made a mistake. Everybody <laughs> makes mistakes. No, never you. All right. So then I put that little border on that cash and barter sign. Now we can go ahead and decorate. Oh, there's a little piece that comes with it. It's a little poster. And we are going to take our scissors. Let's put our other ones back. I have different scissors for different things. So here you can see a little poster. It says jungle. Huh? Not trying to say the name of it, but the jungle. Huh? And departing times. Okay. Um. And I'm going to just run a little bit of glue on this is our poster frame, like this. Just a little bit of glue on that and then I can put it over the poster like that. And now we have a framed poster. Vanessa says, hi, Nicole and Harrison, I made it. Hi, so glad you made it. How cute is that? Did I put it upside down? No. It <laughs> says, Jungle Cruise, free excursions today. And it says something at the bottom of my essay. I don't know what it is because I can't read that. It's too small. Can I try? Okay. What's it say? All right. This, first we need to put on our window, and that goes here. This is halfway for half fare. No. <laughs> All right, so we're just adding on the window on this little open square here. And I see a little bit of excess glue, so I'm just gonna wipe that away. See, it all stays really quickly. It's good stuff. Okay. Um, so the window will be on the right side and then there's a thinner side and a thicker side. Um, so the thicker one is the bottom, okay? That's the orientation that it goes, just like that. Does that make sense? Okay, so see, it's on the right side is the window. This is the top is thinner and it's thicker at the bottom. Okay, now I'd like to add our cash and barter. Before I do that, I just kind of want to place it to know where it goes. See, having these... Having these tweezers is so good. All right, I like it to be kind of up higher. So um, I'm gonna put this cash 
or barter sign kind of up high on the left side of the front wall. Just make sure it's all straight. And then we take our sign and put glue on the back. And then we can place that right underneath the cash and barter sign. I have some questions. Hold on. And then boom. What do you think? Good so far? Okay, go ahead. Amanda asks, did I miss any juicy news from the afternoon session? I don't think so. I don't think anything happened. I don't know. think so either. Um, All right. This is our ticket office floor. So we're going to put that down first. And I'm going to have a bead of glue on the bottom and just put it at the front and hold it there for just a second until it holds. Yes, what were you gonna say? Does the ticket office come with the kit? Yes, it does. The only thing that doesn't come is the roofing materials. All right, now the important thing here for your next step is to note that the slant goes from the high point to the low point. The low point is in the front, okay? Because your ticket office slants from just like this is a roof, right? But it's half a roof. So it'll be the high point to the low point and the low point is in the front, okay? So I'm gonna put a bead of glue at the bottom of this side and the front of the other side. This, those are the two points that are touching. So all the touching points, add glue. And again, I'm using Kite Bond Quick and Thick. It's the only glue I recommend. And we're gonna put that on the left side if you're looking at towards the front of the ticket office. It would be on the left. And you just wanna make everything flushed, all the corners flushed, all the edges flushed. The way you hold the word flush sounds like when you hold a toilet flush. <laughs> And then we're going to do the same to the opposite side. Just all the points that touch you add glue to. Quick, uh, the tight bond, it will dry out quickly. So make sure you put the tap, the cap on after every single use. Because there's that one time you're going to forget and then it starts seizing up on you. So, and then you have to like dig it out, use a toothpick. It's gonna happen. So I'm gonna tell you what to do. Use a toothpick and dig it out. And it's quite um, satisfying. <laughs> you can get big old bugs out of it. All right, so that's flushed. Big old bugs. Big old bugs, boogers, big old bugs. Okay, that's it, right? Now we just add the roof and that goes just like this, easy peasy. I knew this one would be fast, Lemon right? Squeezy. Lemon squeezy. Put some glue on all the points that it's gonna touch. You can decorate it as much as you want. I'm just giving you the bare minimums of what I did for mine. And then, and I'd be really excited to see how y'all do. So share it with me by, um, tagging me on your Instagram stories and I will share them. And I have a saved stories that if they're like really cool, I'm going to save it for people to see over and over again. You'll be famous and you can do it just like that. Or you can get this raffia ribbon, which I have plenty of. I get it bulk from that seller and I'm using about four pieces of it. Basically, I just put where I want, snip it. It's all about eyeballing it. I'm going to do it one at a time. So it's going to go real fast. doesn't matter which side, just be consistent. Okay, boom. Put a bead of glue, and then there's a small working time so you don't have to stress. And if you want to overhang a bit, 
you can you can spread it out you can ruffle it up you can open it up if you want but it's gonna hold boom like that okay now our second piece just go ahead and overlap now so you're gonna start from the front and work your way back um, so I'm gonna do about four pieces of that they sell it by the yard, so this is definitely a yard. <laughs> so one yard will do it for you. I use the same ribbon, raffia ribbon from this seller on my tiki hut. Um, so if you have that, you can also get it from this seller if you have that DIY kit. Uh, I do use a darker color for my tiki hut. This is the blonder color, I guess you would say. Yeah, I'm going to use four pieces. Just same, same, just snip it with any old scissors. Not your mama's sewing scissors, okay? No fancy scissors. No, don't do that. All right. Layer that on. Look how fast and easy this is. You can do it. Anyone can cook. Anyone can build. And you're building a dollhouse. Don't shh, don't tell anybody. Okay. <laughs> Add a bead of glue. I made you all do dollhouses. <laughs> okay, I like a dollhouse every once in a while. It's a dollhouse. All right. Welcome to the dollhouse. EA's made countless of dollars off of a virtual dollhouse. Yeah, right? Did you know that was the intention? What? Virtual dollhouse. That's what the creator said. I, when I was in my late 20s and I was with your daddy in the beginning, um, I countless hours playing the Sims game when Sims first came out. I would play it over and over and over again. And he was like... Did you have fun with your electronic dollhouse today? And then once he said that, I was like, and I'm done. <laughs> okay. And then we just add in our ticket off. Oh, it says ticket agent. Um, we just add our ticket agent sign. No well, ticket agent is included. Not the agent, no, but just a boop like that. Uh, it'll stay. The end. Done. That was easy, right? Okay, so now I'll put this one away. We're getting so there. Get it confused. Yeah, we're getting there. How cute is that? That was so fast. All right. Now on to the most difficult part will be the front entrance, okay? We're not going to do the roof yet? No, because we're going to do that last. That's just the paper roof. Yeah. Oh, I goofed. Okay. Do you want me to hold something? Nope. I'm good. All right. So we're going to use there. You have a fancier. I took mine out of that. Um, all of this comes, all of these come in one little um, puzzle. But I am. these all come together. You're going to put your head together. Uh, originally, I was going to do all the head, but now I feel like you guys should do it because you can make it as different as you want. And that's the creative and fun part because then it makes it original for you. And you're going to get more pleasure out of it knowing that it was you that did it. So these are all the pieces that come with it. One, two, three. Missing a bead. <laughs> I knew I dropped it. Hold on. Let me get one more out. Four. Oh, I did it again. Little pieces. It's handy to have like a tray or something. I normally keep everything in these little trays and it keeps everything organized and together so they're not like falling all over the place. Uh, maybe some cups, whatever you have around your house. Um, bins, anything to be a little bit more organized would be very beneficial. 
Uh, I'm going to be painting these because using markers on these is kind of difficult because they're round. So I will be using the Burnt Sienna and it just so happens to be Golden Bran acrylics, but Burnt Sienna is Burnt Sienna is Burnt Sienna, right? So just this reddish brown is what you're looking for. So put a little bit on my wet palette and I'm going to use a smaller brush, just load up the paint and then lightly we're going to brush it on. I like a thin coat because I kind of like it to be more of a stain. If you have paint stain, that would look pretty cool throughout the whole set. Like if you wanted to do a wood stain, um, that might be kind of cool. Um, but that's the look I'm going for and you can water it down a little bit and it'll give you that kind of a stained look. And then you're able to see some of the grains of the wood. So I'm just going in to all the little nooks and crannies and brush that like that. And I don't want to get my fingers dirty, so I'm going to let that sit and then I'll do the other side when it dries. I'm just going to leave it on my wet palette and do the other side, the other column. So this is the column that comes in your kit, these little spindles. And Natalie would like to know if there's any plan to release more Tiki rooms. Yes. Um, I'm going to do Tiki rooms probably in two weeks. So it's just the big sets that I can't do more of because they take so long, but the Tiki one I can do. Um, like medium sized building. Yeah. Uh, so next Friday I'll be doing, hold on. I need to see my sign for reference. This is our sign that we're doing as reference. We're gonna copy. Can you see it from there? I, I used a different wood color. I realize that now. All I think, of your colors have been slightly different. No, 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 just this one. This one in particular, I remember I used a raw sienna on that. And I kind of like that different look to it. So I'm gonna leave that there and I'm gonna change it up. I'm going to change it up. Hold on to this one. Burnt Umber. Sorry. Burnt Umber. It's by Golden. It's Burnt Umber. Again, the Burnt Umber, Raw Sienna, Burnt Sienna, all of those are the same color throughout any brand. But we're going to use Burnt Umber. Hi, Daisy. Little Daisy came to visit us. But she's scared, she's so scared. she ran away. Okay, so let's go back and do that after. But I'm going to go ahead and paint these on both sides. These are the top and bottom of our sign. Um, this one is going to be Burnt Sienna. Let's just take a look at all the other things. Oh, I didn't even paint that. That's funny. Well, I won't do it then. I'll just leave that as is. And this one will be a uh, green, the mossy green. This one will be mossy green. Do, do, do. And what's this? <laughs> oh yeah, this goes with that. Okay, <laughs> I'm so dumb. All right, and this one I kept the same. So I'm just gonna take a, I'm using that E33 Copic marker and I'm just gonna, brush on the tours departing daily just to bring out a little bit more color to that sign and then we are using mossy green for this one and this one let's do that now because that needs to um dry i am using the mossy meadow by folk art craft paint just a little bit and I'm using my makeup sponge. 
because I have a lot of engraving there that I don't want the paint to seep in there. I want to keep those dark uh, lines. And then I have my applicator that you can just use your hand if you're using a bigger piece of that makeup sponge. These are just to keep my hands clean so I'm not touching everything. And then we're just dabbing lightly, just light dab, touch, daub on that so that it doesn't go and seep inside those beautiful lines and crevices. We want it to look like the Jungle Cruise sign was three pieces of wood stacked on top of each other. That's why they have those lines in there. And then this entrance sign, we're also putting the green mossy bits like that. Okay, that's pretty much done. Um, oh, one more thing gets that. Um, this is for Tours Departing Daily, the frame of that. So we'll just do the same for that. Okay, let that dry. Now, these are done, done. These guys all get the brown treatment. <laughs> I'm gonna use another sponge for that. Okay, and that is our burnt umber. Burnt umber. Make sure that's the correct, yeah. So it's a deeper brown. That's really pretty. I like the contrast of the different kinds of woods. It makes it stand out, makes the sign stand out. I think that's why I chose it the last time. And I really do like how that turned out. So we're gonna definitely keep with the same. that. Kind of using a sweeping motion and dabbing at the same time. Um, and then it's acting more like a stain than it would just straight paint because I'm lightly brushing it on. So it looks more like wood instead of painted wood. Okay, let's leave that. Um, this, I did one part red, but you can't really see it. So I think I'm gonna use burnt sienna. Oh, I don't know why I did that, but anyway. Let's do the marker burnt sienna. Yeah, which is E09. I'm gonna just do it on one half. And then the other half, I think it was black. So I'm gonna use, this is a 110. And there's a half line, score line for you. You can make it whatever color you want. Okay, and then that will sit like this. Okay, let me get some more glue on my wet palette. And then I can take my tweezers. Is this boring? No. <laughs> Nobody's talking. Also, you can talk amongst yourselves in the chat and get to know each other. I'm going to be doing a lot more lives of just me general throughout the week. Um, if you happen to be able to catch it, you'll see me working, doing various things, and eventually different angles of the camera. Like some will be up in the corner so you can see the full studio. We're going to be 
working all of those kinks out eventually with the cameras and investing more in um, production, production. Mm. technique, not techniques, um, equipment. Blake says this is relaxing to watch, just kicking back. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I wanted it to be. Um, and then I am going to use a bit of beige color paint. Oops, no, definitely not that. Where is it? Oh no, where did my beige go? I don't see it. Ah, Titan Buff. I love this. It's a beige color by Golden. Um, I'm going to add a little to my wet palette. And I'm going to take a smaller brush, a smaller round brush. Uh, I think I have a bunch of brushes off to the side here. And I'm just going through and looking to see which one I really like. Actually, I might go with a detailer. Now, there's some small spots in there. So this is a detail brush. It's like really, really thin. It's like a zero, zero, zero kind of a thing. So I'm going to get a little bit of water on there. Thin it down just a chintz. Vanessa and Superfluous are both very excited for more lives. Yay! I'm excited too. So now I'm going to be filling in the inside of the lettering with um, my beige color to make those letters pop and stand out. Uh, just take it nice and slow. A little bit of paint goes a long ways and using the thinnest brush that you have or that you can get and they sell inexpensive ones, detail brushes at the craft store. Um, you don't have to get expensive ones. I think I got this one. This is a Princeton. I think I got this one on Amazon, actually. And I like to have several. Because sometimes when you're working they will eventually spread out and then they're no good for me. And I'll replace them. Also, this is, can be messy. You can be outside the lines and it'll still look amazing because it's the Jungle Cruise and it's messy. It can look worn and will look like somebody hand painted it. There, just like that, Jungle Cruise. See, I did go over a bit and it looks better like that. So I'm gonna go purposefully over some of the lines and not make it so pristine on purpose. I'm going over, I just think it looks so much better. Like weathering, like you said, Harrison, but just looks like, a human did it like that. <laughs> I like that better. Okay, now, <laughs> and that's all it took. Just a simple little thing like that. And we're done with that. But take good care of your detailers. If you're going to spend any money on brushes, detailers are the ones. They're like one hair each. But make sure you really clean them out because there's not many hairs on there. <laughs> Um, you don't want them to spread and you just pinch them off. Never leave them in your water, which I did for this one. That's so bad. Don't leave your brushes in water because they'll spread. They'll spread open. Okay, what else? That's what bad. else? What else? What? That's bad. That's bad. Now you have this little stick. This layers everything up. We're, so don't, that's part of it. Don't throw that away. That's part of it. Does not need to get painted. You won't see that. And these little parts will do after. Let's focus on this part now. So I'm going to 
use that burnt umber color. I need to add more. Okay, I need to get more of that color. All right. I like the consistency of the acrylic fluids by Golden. Golden has a lot of different um, strengths, strength, strengths in their paints. So you can get straight, thick acrylic all the way to ink. Um, so this is fluid acrylic of Golden brand. Amanda would like to know. Mm. How will peg people be sold on the website in the future? On the website, you are going to see only blank DIY pegs. So the ones that I paint for people, those are what you're going to find, just blank ones. They will have the little noses on it. Um, but they won't be painted. They won't be painted. I'm going to sell, make an option if you would like to buy um, already made ears. I'm going to make those. And I'm also going to sell DIY blank ears so you can become creative and create your family. So I'll have the child size, the lady size, we're calling it, and the gentleman size. I hope that's okay. I really don't want to not include somebody, but those are what we're gonna call them going forward, forward, lady and gentleman and child, okay? However you want to paint them up is how you're going to do it and it's gonna be great. Will they include hair options? I'm going to have those, at, they won't include them, but the option to have them, yes, that you can purchase. So there are gonna be nominal fees, like a dollar for accessories. Um, so you can just build upon your doll and it'll be cheaper than if you were to buy one made by me. Um, it's just all the pieces that you have to paint. And you can do it, it's easy. We'll do paint projects together. We'll do stuff like that here where I show you how to paint some people. But um, it, it takes me so long to do one person, one little people. So I would rather have you guys do it so that you can have them. I feel so bad you guys want them. And I'm like, ah, oh, it takes me forever. Amanda says, wonderful, thank you. I can't wait to make my little peg army. Yeah, that's adorable. All right, and then we did this one already. Yes, okay, so I'm done with all the paints. Now we can just assemble once these dry. They're almost dry. Okay. The way that it goes is there's these notches here and here. And then there's that one in the middle. That's for your stick. That will go here. Um, everything's in the way. I'm sorry. I just don't want to get my hands dirty. Also, if you rub off the paint, then it becomes like a stain. So... There. See, I like that. I like that look. That will be in the front. I love that kind of weathered look. So, distress it. Which one, Daisy? <laughs> okay, so I like that look. See how it's distressed like that? So I'm going to leave that in the front. And also towards the bottom because you see here it would cover that. So I want to see that. I like that detail. It looks really, really cool to me. Um, so I'm going to leave that at the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to need to put, see, I, I made it just right the for it to sit inside. Yeah, I measured. I mean, I really took the time to do that. See? Just fits perfect. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to add a bit of glue to that with my glue brush. Vanessa said, I'm glad I got my knee peg already painted. It's, it's not my thing. Yeah. Said, Though, I did Eva's sip and paint this week, and I didn't do Ooh. too bad. That's odd. I know you guys can do it. And you can probably do something even better than me. So I want to be able to do more, like, character things for you guys and more fairy boxes. But I can't do that if I'm constantly making dolls for everyone. And those are simple dolls, but I was like doing hundreds, you guys, not just, <laughs> not just like 10, but like a lot. And so that takes a lot of time. I'm just holding it there, but 
basically it just goes into those two spots. I think what I'm going to do is put more glue actually, because I feel like the glue kind of was drying out. So I'm going to put some more and just really, what happened? Okay. I'm sorry. This is taking so long. Superfluous says I need a Vanessa and Sarah. Oh yeah. Okay. I know. I owe some people some things, so that will still be a thing. Don't worry. But um, I do want to get those blank ones out to you guys. So Friday's shop drop. I'd like to do a, a weekly shop drop. It's not always going to be big things. It's going to be a lot of little things. Um, so on next Friday, we're going to do blank peg dolls and benches Ooh. and trash cans. I have two. I have a Main Street. And I have an adventure land. Um, so I think on Monday, maybe even tomorrow. No, Monday. I like Monday. Monday, I think I'm going to make a reel to show you what will be coming out on Friday's shop drop. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to turn it so that I get that fun, pretty side that I want with all the distressed look like that. Can you see that? Yep, okay. So I have that piece. Ugh. And then the next one is this piece. Wait, this one will go down here like that. But the main thing that I think we need to put on is this to dry fit Jungle Cruise. Okay. This like that. Okay, so the bottom piece, we're gonna add some glue to the second piece and just add that in like this. Okay, just like that. And then add some glue to the top of that sign. And we're gonna sandwich it to what we just did previously. Okay. Oh, what was that? Sure, what's like? And then don't forget the insides of these little parts that will go on the posts. Be generous with your glue at this point, be generous. Okay, let me show you. Okay, so the top and in those little grooves. Now we just fit it all inside. It should all come together slowly but surely. There, it popped in and then we sandwich it together. Okay, like that. Ugh. I don't wanna mess with it too much. <laughs> it, I wish I had an overhead view of it. Okay, bear with me. I'm gonna undo the camera really quickly so I can show you. Cause I feel like you need to see, <sighs> I feel like you need to see a little bit more up close. There. You see? Ugh, I'm the worst. Yes or not? Is it on top? Up a little more. There you go. Okay. So see, it's sandwiched in between there. This piece goes up into that hole. I'm just gonna let this dry for a minute. I'm gonna put this back so I don't lose you. Sorry for the shakiness. That's your okay. Oh. So we should have done that. Well, that would have been clever. Yeah, that would have been, but I'm dumb. Okay. So <laughs> you can finagle just a little bit. Uh, I don't want to. Okay. Let that dry. But now I need to take this piece 
add some glue to this long rectangle piece at the top here. And that's just going to go in that groove that was in the back. You can lay that down. And it's gonna go flush to the top. I can feel it on the top and it's in like this. Okay? Yes? Yes? On the screen? Down? Yes. Yeah, okay. That is the stick that everything lays on top. <laughs> so the first thing that goes on is this one, this little cutout oval piece. Like a shield or a leaf looking thing. Ah, like a shield, I think you're right. Oh, I'm sorry. My throat is weird. <laughs> It almost sounded like a burp. And then a little bit on the top. FYI, we're coming upon an hour. Oh, I might not get done. I feel like maybe the reason it died so fast was because the camera was new. So maybe it wasn't at full charge when we got it. I don't know. Okay, let's do this one. Forgot to glue the frame on top of the Tours Departing Daily sign. The green on top. Like that. And there's some glue, so I'm just going to take my brush and sweep that away. Like that. And then add some glue to that stick that's there. And also just at the bottom of that shield, because this is going to rest right there. Boop. Okay. Boom. Actually, I don't want it to do that there. I made it flush at the bottom. It didn't stick on the top, on the bottom of that shield. Um, I'm going to add the frame on top of the entrance. So I'm going to take my, just drag it through the glue with my tweezers and then place it on top. Tweezers are grand to have. It's a really great tool. Okay. Nearly done, you guys. And then that's good. Now, while it's on the flat surface, we'll glue the entrance sign on top. So it just needs to get glue on those flat bottom parts. Is this too much or are people understanding what I'm doing? I mean, I've been able to follow. Okay. But you also do miniature work. Okay, well, just like that. Miniature work too. Yeah, just like that. So having it on the table will help it to be flat and proper. Okay. So that, that sign is done. The entrance sign is done. Now it's just the pretty part, right? So this is the more difficult part that we're gonna have to do together. You have to decide how you want it to look. I am going to paint this whole thing a burnt umber first. So this Part is the head for my mask and I'm just doing a quick brushing of burnt umber not really caring too much of that I'm gonna leave it to the side because I don't want my fingers to touch it. I'm gonna let that dry then I need this triangle piece and this tiny rectangle squarish piece. I'm gonna paint those that buff color. So I'm gonna clean my brush out. And go into that tighten buff color. And I'm just gonna drag 
over the color of that, both like that. And the front side, boop, 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 boop. But that's just me, you guys do whatever you want. But if you wanna see how I do it, this is what I did. Oh, you know, I did that to the last one too. I dropped it on the floor. Really? Yeah. It's always this piece. It's so annoying. Okay. Um, for me, it doesn't have to be perfect. But I also like to do the top of the triangle. Um, it does eat up your paint on the edges. So it will soak in and show more of that darkness of the wood in just a minute. You'll see it turns in. If you don't like that, you just keep adding like three or four layers of paint, but I kind of like it. So I just did two coats of that paint. Then I need to paint the bone. Um, originally I did white. Should I do white or should I do this Titan buff? You can try the Titan buff. Yeah, I think so. I think that looks better than mine. And I'm just doing the top of it. I'm not doing the edges. I think that's cute. I like that better than the bright white. All right. And now I have these little beads over here. I have four beads. And I need two of those to be yellow and two of those to be red. So I need to. Oh, no, it's a math equation. <laughs> Nicole Adele needs four beads painted. <laughs> Okay, and also this is going to be red and yellow. So all the things that I need red and yellow painted, I'm going to bring forward. Oh, I lost it again. Okay, here it is. Now, how I paint my little beads. Oh, that was a close one. Yeah. Okay. Is I have, I put them on toothpicks. And then they're easier to paint. Otherwise, you're going to get it. And then I use that stand that I have, the drying stand, and I paint that. So that's my little tip for you guys. Okay, I have a yellow and a red. It's a basic yellow, a basic red. Actually, I'm going to use this yellow, I think. Instead of a bright yellow, I'm going to use a Naples yellow and a red and just a basic red. Okay, nothing fancy, you guys, nothing fancy. Just a yellow and a red. Yeah, I like that. Everyone has a yellow and a red. Don't they? Okay, so we're gonna paint two of the colors red, but see, that's how I do it. And then I'll reuse these toothpicks constantly. I'm always using the same toothpicks for like, until they break basically. <laughs> there was always like a clump of, and then I'll put like blue tack on them. Do you see my stand? Does it show? Yeah. Uh, and then they sit there. So that's how I do my beads. It's easier than trying to hold them. I don't know if anyone else does that, but. If I'm doing something that has a hole in it, I'm going to use that. So <laughs> use it to my advantage. And then clean your brush. Don't forget to clean your water because mine's looking pretty, pretty harsh. You but need to get no, I'm okay for this. It's fine. Nothing fancy. And then we're going to do that Naples yellow. But use whatever you have. I just like that toned down yellow color. Kind of looks like the toothpick. I'm okay with that. I didn't want bright yellow. I wanted it to be more natural, like they found it, you know, out of the earth or something. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, let's do marker time. I'm going to use that same yellow. And I'm going to choose a red, and it is cadmium red R27. 
I'm using a plain piece of paper that you would get like a printer paper. Oh, it's over here. Just a plain piece of printer paper. This is, yo, this, this is the most difficult part right now. <laughs> All right, we're going to, you can get whatever, paper, you can get colored paper in music, but I just like the thinness of this. So I'm just coloring yellow on my paper. <laughs> But it's thin. That's why I like this. You can use origami paper, but then usually origami paper is only one-sided because guess what we're going to do? When this dries, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to paint on the other side, marker the other side. Then I'm going to do the same for the red. The cadmium red, is that what it was? I think so. Don't get my thing. I got the thing. <laughs> so I'm making my own colored paper, basically. Let's see. Somebody's probably thinking, what? Why? Why are you doing it that way? Why wouldn't you just get colored paper? Because I really want the thin paper. Okay, and then we're gonna just do the back. And this is where I should have put like that <laughs> to protect my surface. Because even though it dries, it doesn't dry as fast on the paper. All right. And then the same for the red. Just folding that in half so that I can do the back without the front bleeding onto my work surface. You don't need much, but we just want to make sure that it's red and yellow. All right. Let that dry for a hot second. And we'll go back to our headpiece and do the bottom part of the burnt umber. Nope. Where's my brush? Where's my brush? Here's. Have I bored you yet? I mean, there's still six of us here. <laughs> so sad. Well, I hope that one day we'll it's, have more friends. It's educational. Yeah. But I do get people to watch after the fact, but it'd be fun to have more people during so that we can bounce off of each other. That's why I try to make different times too, so people can catch one or two. All right. Now... Hopefully this will entice you to get one of my sets. Okay, for this guy, we're going to use our detailer brush. Actually, I'm gonna first do a coat of the yellow all the way through. Like says we aren't bored. Oh, thanks friends. So I'm just using the yellow, same yellow that we had here and painting that tuft of hair piece, like a little mohawk tuft of hair piece. And then I'm gonna go in with my detail brush and grab some red, some red and just, see that? Just make some little lines. That's it. How difficult was that? Not. So that piece is done. Looking at mine, I have a little bit of red. I should have kept that on. Let's go with the detail brush. I have a little bit of red as the tongue for my square. So I'm just going to do a little half moon kind of a thing. Superfluous says I'm mem mesmerized. <laughs> Vanessa says I don't need to be enticed. I just need a bigger house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your place is so fantastic. I love everything that you've done with it. It was really pretty cool. All right. Just like that. Um, I feel like you're going to think it's hard to do the mask 
face, but it's really not. And I'm going to show you why. Okay. So on the mask face, I'm using a blue and I'm using this Waverly matte finish color, which is called pool. I got this from Walmart. I think it's a Walmart only. Please just find a different color. It's just a light blue. It's kind of a chalky blue. Um, if you can't find it, just use a different color. It's not, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, find where you'd like to place the front of your mask. And I, can you see that? I am just going to make a, like a, like a oval. on the front. Like that, okay? How easy is that? Look, it's even got like messed up on one side. That's okay, it's meant to look like... It's an artifact. Yes, it's made to look like that. Okay, then I go back in, once that dries... <laughs> okay, once that dries, we're gonna make two circles for the eyes for the burnt, with the burnt umber. So one thing you can do is the back of your paintbrush and make two circles. So you can just daub it, boop, like that, and then make small circular movements and you can make one dot and then another dot for the other eye. Like that. Pretty cute. Okay. And then make sure you brush that off because the more paint that builds up, the bigger your dot becomes. Now on the other side, I'm gonna do a thick line down the middle. So if you want it just like mine, this is what I did. I really like the mask. You like my design? Yeah, it's really okay. cute. So I do a thick line. So I did like two of these lines side by side. So it's a thick line. Yes, is that in? Because I can't see here, so yeah, on the screen, it yes? Is. Okay, just like that. Let that dry, don't do anything with it. Got it? Okay. Let that dry because if you add any color right now, it's gonna get muddy. I know it's tempting to just go on. Trust me, I know, but don't. Just let it dry. All right. This piece and this piece we'll put on last after everything is done. Um, and that one and this one. Let's work on the spears. We're gonna use four toothpicks and I'm gonna provide them for you. I hope I have enough. Maybe I should have you provide your own. I don't know if I have enough toothpicks. One, two, three. I feel like you can buy your own toothpicks. <laughs> Blake must be new here because they ask. Mm -hmm. Is the Jungle Cruise your favorite attraction? If not, which one is? Oh, that's adorable. It would be Small World is my favorite attraction. Um, you should I'm, see the room. Yeah, I'm obsessed with it. But thank you for asking because there are going to be people that pop in that don't know me. And then, yeah. So I'm going to add some glue to the top of the toothpick. And I'm going to grab that bead and place it and string it through and then let me see I can use that excess glue removal add some more to the top basically what I'm doing is adding a bead and then adding a spearhead as far up as it will go 
like that. Bead and spearhead. Yes? Yeah, it's on camera. Okay. That's what it's gonna look like. We're gonna do that to all of them. So we have four. You could probably use the same toothpick that you were using because we're gonna paint it and cover it up, but eh. Rustin says, I'm so glad that you like It's a Small World. I keep seeing people who hate the ride and it makes me sad. Yeah, so many people hate it, but I absolutely love it. The little dolls are adorable. Um, I really like the paper mache style dolls. Those were actually made by Rolly Crump. Rolly, Rolly Crump. Um, it was Mary Blair's imagination for it. But really, Rolly was the one that saw it through. I don't know if I very much like the the animated dolls as much as those paper the ones. Yeah, I prefer the paper mache dolls. Like says, as a non Disney buff, I wouldn't know small ah. if you shoved it in my face. I poked myself. Be careful; <laughs> the spears are actually poked. <laughs> the toothpicks are. Okay, so we're just trying. Oh. Look, I'm glad that this is happening because then you can understand my pain. And this was the whole reason why I wasn't going to do the whole spear <laughs> facade for everyone. Because it's a pain. If you only have to do it one time, it's not bad. But if you have to do it ten times, gets to be enough. Gets to be boring. Vanessa says, Small World is a visual feast for the eyes. Ooh, I love that. Visual feast. It's a smorgasbord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we're going to thread the yellow ones on just the same. If it piles up with glue, you, it doesn't matter because we're going to cover that. The main thing is to get enough glue so that the spearheads stay on. And it's at a weird angle as well. And then my finger takes off the excess glue and it's a whole thing. You'll understand when you're doing it. You'll be like, ah, oh, it's frustrating. Good thing I only have to do four of these. So string on your glue, string on your bead, get your little spearheads, add more glue. And there's that groove in the spearhead and that's where the toothpick fits in. Okay. And then that will get painted just the tops with silver. And I wanted to do that next. I, I will say for the best silver that I have found, it is this golden acrylic fluid. I don't even bother with anything else. Get this one. Michaels sells this brand and you can also get it on Amazon. But this golden fluid acrylic, the silver, yes. The <laughs> silver and the gold, yes. Not a lead belcher fan? Mm. No. Silver and gold, silver and gold, silver and gold. Worth the money, people. I'm not going to, there's a couple golds. There's a fine and then there's an antique one. Um, yes. <laughs> is all I have to say. Yes. Don't leave your brushes in the water. Okay. We're going to go back to the head and I'm going to do a little bit of this. Oh, you sighed. Is it boring? No, I'm waiting for a chance. To okay. Read. You want us to say something? No. Okay. No, I'll read it later. So, um, my detail brush, because remember I went a thick line with the brown. Now we're just going to do one thin line in the middle with the silver. You see? So get your paint loaded and then make sure you turn it to thin it and you just have enough on your brush and then carefully. And you know, I have unsteady hands. They shake all the time. So if I can do this, you can do it. Breathe in, hold your breath. Make the line. Don't hold your breath for too long. 
There, see? That looks really good. Yeah. And then I'm going to outline the whole mask outer edge. Superfluous says, I'm watching Rolly and Mary work on It's a Small World. I'm behind the attraction in the background while oh, I'm watching like, the Jungle Cruise. I love that. They said you would have totally fit in Imagineering. Oh, I love that. That makes me super happy. I'm not being very um, careful with the outer edge side because I have a lot of brushing, like a dry brush look that I really liked. So I purposefully made it so that it's not perfect. But I do want a little bit more at the top right here. Like that. That's it. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with that Titan Buff. Now that our brown is dry, I'm going to add in a smaller circle of Titan Buff. You could use a toothpick. You can use this detail brush. Toothpicks work great for this kind of work. We're going to do a toothpick at the next step. Do, 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 do. So slightly, slightly smaller. That way you're not making a circle, you're making dots. Dots are easier than making circles. See? <laughs> <laughs> you can leave it like that, it's really cute. We're gonna do a couple more smaller circles and then we'll be done with that. That'll give it the ring around a ring around a ring. Mm -hmm. Correct. The onion ring. <laughs> All right. Now we can go in into that paper that we made. We're going to snip a little bit of that yellow and a little bit of our red. Maybe like a half inch thickness. I'm going to get rid of this white nothing fancy okay like that um make them kind of even if you want that doesn't have to be perfect so i have two pieces of paper and then i'm just going to snip fringe all the way and don't snip it all the way off or else you know it it will fall apart but i'm just going to there and snipping little fringe all the way. more than half. Yeah. Like three quarters of the way. Yes. And just making a fringe. Okay. And then you can make it crinkly a bit. You know, another thing you could use, you could use cocktail stir. Mm. toothpicks and then you already have the fringe right because they sell mm -hmm. those in reds and blues and all sorts of things so um whatever you you're skip if you'd like <laughs> yeah so i'm just making fringy bits like this and guess what we're doing with that you guessed it we're gonna wrap the yellow with the yellow and the red with the red that's not what i thought was happening no oh, you're making a hot dog <laughs> thought we were gonna put mix our mustard and our ketchup. No. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna add in a little bit of glue. Let me get some more glue. A little bit of glue starter and ending. You'll see. Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit of glue to our toothpick, and then we'll add our yellow to yellow. So. Just go ahead and start wrapping it around. 
You may want to add a little bit of glue to the paper so that while you're going around and around, it's sticking to itself. Otherwise, it'll only glue on the small part and then it'll just it unravel. Might un it might unravel on you as you're doing it and it'll be kind of annoying. So just keep going around and around and just to the top. Don't do the bottom because that's your fringes. And if it's too much glue, then as you're doing it, take some off. That's why it's great to have a glue brush, dedicated glue brush. I want to make sure I was doing it in the camera. Okay, and then there was glue on that paper, and so it stays. Clean fingers, and then you just make mush. Make mush. Make mush there. You made your own cocktail stir. Yay. <sighs> Cute. Is that good? Mm -hmm. All right. Put that off to the side. Do the yellow and what happened to it? Where's the other one? It's right in front of you, is it not? Yeah. My God. All right. Let's grab a red one. This time. <laughs> let's grab a red one and start that process now. Okay. Uh, no comments, no, no questions. Comments. Are you only doing one of each color? No, I have to do others. Oh. But you're making a fringe. I know. I realize that. Having problems. <laughs> Having problems. First time. No, second. Having problems. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm rushing for their own. When you do it, you should do it a lot slower. Do it slower. Take your time with it. Um, I'm trying to do it fast because I don't want to bore you guys. But then I realized what the ones that are watching <laughs> later on, they can. They can bore. Yeah. They can if they didn't want to be here, they wouldn't be. Well, that's true. They're free to leave. They're not held here against their will. Yet. All right. So I'm going to stop that part for right now. If we had it our way, you would be. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my mask because that yellow has dried. And I'm going to add another boop of... I'm going to use a toothpick. I'm going to use the toothpick... With burnt umber and make a smaller. I think that's it for it. I don't know. I don't think I want to go one more dot like I did on the other one. I think that's enough. Yeah. I kind of like it like that because I made a smaller one. So I'm going to keep it like this. I think that looks really cute. Blake says the Jungle Cruise is holding him hostage. <laughs> I kind of like a little bit of distress, so I'm going to take my detailer and just make some weathering at the bottom here to look more like a coconut. <laughs> That's what I did. You see at the bottom? I distressed it a bit. It's in distress. <laughs> now we can glue on the mouth. Yay. And the mask reminds me of a duck. <laughs> Why? I don't know. All right. Let's do the triangle first. On the back of the unpainted triangle, add your glue and then place it at the base of that head. It's gonna take up all of that space. I'll let that dry for a minute. Okay. While I still have that silver paint, 
I'm going to paint and use my glue brush as well. I'm going to paint the spearhead silver. The whole top, including the top of that. And the side. This one coats well on the side. This paint is really good. Oh, there goes my hand. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Fun. <laughs> it's like an earthquake in my body. <laughs> there we go. You can distress that if you want. I'm not gonna. But you could. You could put a little bit of brown yeah, to don't distress, distress that. That's cool. <laughs> don't put them in distress. The, on the sides. Got any jokes for us, Harrison? Um, Got any a Jungle Cruise jokes for us? No. Great. Does anyone else? What's your favorite? <laughs> what's everybody's favorite Jungle Cruise joke or part? <laughs> what, do, what do you like about the Jungle Cruise, everybody? <laughs> Don't all talk it. Bueller. 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 Harrison, what's yours? My favorite part of Jungle Cruise is getting off of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I great. like Jungle Cruise. <laughs> okay. Let those spears dry. Now we can add the mouth. So I'm going to add some glue to the base of that triangle. I have an answer. And then tap it on to the square. See that? <laughs> if you want to paint the side, you could. I'm not going to. Like that. And then leave that to dry. I'm going to put it upside down to dry. It's almost done. I'm going to clean off that little bit of glue at the bottom there. Um, I don't want that to stick out. Blake says, as an avid jungle cruiser, <laughs> I love the part where the boat does the thing. Ah, yes, that's right. That is a great part. Vanessa says, this is the last time I was on, the waterfall was off. It wasn't very funny. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. The idea of the eighth wonder of the world just shutting off. <laughs> That is pretty funny. What did they do? It's just like, where's the cave? Mm, I don't know. Do they have any jokes? Do they probably have anything not. to say? Um, probably. Do I have one? No. But do other people? Probably. I'm asking Vanessa. Like... Nice. Did you hear that? You can say it, Harrison. He said, it seems like someone forgot to pay the water bill this month. That's a good one. You're funny. Well, he was a Jungle Cruise skipper for much longer than I was. My favorite part of the ride is the piranhas. That's newer. I know. I like the piranhas, though. Everyone hates the piranhas. I didn't work during piranhas. They happened after me. I am a piranha. Name the movie. Um, um... Uh, this is this is for Blake. He should. Oh yeah, Blake. Blake, Blake will should, know this. Would he? Blake just doesn't know theme parks. He knows well. I am a baron. You know it. <laughs> it's his people. It is his people. <laughs> it's your people, Blake. He said, "Um, her." <laughs> what Disney animated movie? Does Australia come into the picture? My people, question mark. Nemo? Yeah! Darla. I am a piranha. I forget that movie takes place in Australia. Yeah. Like, cool dude. Crush. Mm -hmm. He's not, but it's funny. No, but they're making their way over. Right. That's why it's funny. Yeah. Her 
Vanessa said it was so sad. They definitely mentioned it, but I don't remember the joke. I was so distracted by the lack of water, not being able to. <laughs> That's great. Also, Blake said totally knew it. <laughs> Were you fed the answer by someone else? Did you? Are these your own? We're thoughts? quite shocked, actually. Blake's never seen a movie older than 2010. <laughs> Well, that one was around the, 2010. Is it? I bet it was like 2008. Yeah, because you were itty bitty. Let's Google it. Yeah, you were. Place our bets. Place our bets. Everybody, make your bet first before finding out the answer. We're gonna do some fun things on my lives. We're gonna go back to doing some fun giveaways and things like that. Don't so. Google the answer, guys. Don't do it. Be honest. Oh, so somebody was asking about the tiki huts. So I will get those made and do a shop drop for that. Um, okay, well, Blake guessed it spot on. Did he? I don't know if that. What did he say? 2003. Oh, really? It was before you. It's older than me. It's older than you. I thought he you said were I a watched baby. it as a kid. Oh, he's still a kid. <laughs> Sorry, but you are. If you're younger than me, you're still a kid. Ah, we finished those. Those look good. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, here's our sign. That looks really good. Let's put that on our building. Can you see it? Is it in frame? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Put those over. This one, oh, see how it has a glue glue? Blake says, I love the sign. It looks amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of the way it turned out. As a big fan of Jungle Cruise, Blake, do you think it's accurate? <laughs> huge, huge he's fan. Disney park fan. <laughs> he's never been, right? No. <laughs> to a single Disney park. I mean, he's in Australia. 100% accurate. Couldn't be better, they said. <laughs> I'm shocked they haven't built one over there. I know. There were there. plans at one point. And then I forget the reason why. Probably not enough tourism. Mm -hmm. You would think it's a huge continent. Blake has been on that ride a million times. It's uncanny. It's a huge continent, but it doesn't get the kind of tourism that like France does because you have all of Europe. Yeah, but it could get Asia. Everyone goes from Asia goes to Australia. Yeah, but you, they could also go to Hong Kong. Well, Shanghai or that's Japan. true. Okay. Now, let's glue this on so you find out where it hits and then add glue. Mostly, it's just the top. Vanessa says, you know how I normally say I need the sign as a brooch? This one should be a necklace. Yes, I have was thinking that too. That would be pretty amazing. Necklace. Necklace. That would be pretty amazing. Okay, I think that's it. I think those are all the high points that touch. And then... We put this on like that. Boop. Done. Look how good that looks, you guys. Hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> Only one more part, right? Pretty much. Just the roof. The roof thing. So I'm just going to show how to do that and then place a few on and then they can do the rest. And then we're done. Oh my gosh. Oh, I know. Okay, I forgot to do the hair, so we're going back to the yellow and the... Well, you lied. <laughs> just a little bit more yellow and red paper. Doesn't have to be fancy. Let's put these papers together and do the same thing and fringe them. This is the back of my head. We're going to make that all crispy and fun. 
you can you can even do like some more snippings. I'm holding them together and just going through and snipping it some more. And then maybe we fold it again. Let's put some through and then fold it again. Let's put some glue, put the pieces together and then some more glue on half of the side and fold it together and then mush it again. <laughs> and now we can go in and just snip it a bit. We're making the back hair piece. So you can just take off some bits. I'm doing like a angle cuts now so it's not so straight across and then the other side angle cuts and some pieces will fall out okay like that it should look messy okay <laughs> and then we can put this on the back of the head. So get my glue brush. Let's get some new glue. I'm gonna put it directly on. What is the mask supposed to be? Oh like no. A, like a face? Yeah. It's not an animal? Mm -mm. I think it's just a mask. I thought it was a Donald. And then we're putting that on the back of the head. So it looks like that. Am I in? Yeah, like that. <laughs> then we put on the front of the. Ah, I'm going to add more glue. Add more glue to my wet palette. We're going to touch the bottom of this wooden hair piece, like this little mohawk piece. Put that to the front of the head. Boop, like that. Um, add some glue with my glue brush to the bottom of the bone. And then add that whole bone, oh, and the front of the bone, because it's going to go in the back of that wooden hair piece. Ugh. Like that. You can tilt it a bit or however you want it to go. And it's hard for me to hold it and show you because my hands are shaky. Oh, charge battery. Oh no, oh no! Just as I was going to show it to them. This part no four, good. part four, part four. Oh, you guys, I was nearly done with that. Part four tomorrow, because <laughs> I gotta get it done. Yeah. It's gonna be an early one. It's gonna be very early. I'm gonna need you to wake up early, Harrison, because we have friends coming over and I gotta get it done. Either that or when our friend comes over who this is for, she just gets to watch the stream, which would be kind of fun too. Is it just so, her coming over? And her sister, yeah. yeah. So I'm so sorry. I'm going to stop here and leave it. And oh, I'm so bummed. <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys. Oh, my goodness. All right. We're going to do this earlier Rome tomorrow. wasn't built in a day. <laughs> Part four tomorrow. Just don't go on the same time as Melissa. No, she's going later on at like 5 p.m., I think. Even so we'll compete. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely we will not be, it's going to be like a morning thing. So it'll probably be, we got about an hour and 45 minutes of camera life on part Yeah, two. this one went oh, longer. Okay. So what I think it might be is that since it's a new camera, and it needs to charge to I just stronger. think it doesn't go long. It's an hour and a half is, it's a camera. You know what I mean? You're not meant to videotape on it. I feel like. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we know part oh for part three. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. Okay, 
I will probably abort mission camera down. I <laughs> love that. It's hilarious. You guys are fun. Okay, so we are going to end this here and then I will see you guys tomorrow for the last part, which is just putting the rest of the sign together and then putting the roofing on and that's it. And then we will be complete and it's gonna be super exciting. Okay, I love you guys. You have a most magical weekend. Have a wonderful rest of your Saturday and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to say about noonish Eastern time. Okay. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Oh. <laughs>